Firstly, thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for making an effort to come out to this event today. It's really, really important that we do talk about some of the topics that we're going to discuss. And we are going to go into detail. We're not going to, you know, dance around the fences. We're not going to sugarcoat anything. We are going to talk the truth. When you see this picture of this young child, just want some answers from you guys out there. I want you to tell me what does this picture mean to you? What springs to mind when you see this image? I was just thinking what comes to mind is that he's copying, role modelling what he's seen all around him all the time. I see what Jazz said actually. He's cr clearly cracking joke on the phone um, with somebody but he's a child, he's a baby with a phone in his hand and he's a baby with a phone. Back in the day, I had a, ha a house phone. It was called the house phone. It wasn't the landline, it's the house phone. Never was allowed to answer the house phone and I wasn't allowed to give out that phone number because my dad would answer the phone and say, hello. Ring, ring. Hello. Ring, ring. Hello. Um, 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 can I speak to you? No. <laughs> who, who is this? There wasn't a way in, there was no access. You couldn't get me, you couldn't WhatsApp me, you couldn't Insta me, you couldn't DM me, you couldn't Snap me, you couldn't Tweet me. You couldn't phone the landline. If you phone the landline, I have to time what time you're gonna call so I can stand by the phone and wait for you to ring. And if you rang a minute after that, problems, because my dad's probably gonna answer the phone. So that was protection. There was boundaries. There was rules and regulations. There wasn't an inappropriate image that could be sent to the landline. Neither was there a text, a video, something to, for me to re-traumatize myself of somebody being stabbed, shot or killed. That wasn't coming to the landline phone. This app picture that I've put up here, okay, can you identify all of them? Hopefully you can. No. Okay. Top. Right, my right, your left. Blue button with the F, Facebook. Yeah? The middle one, WhatsApp. Social media I'm talking about, this is social media. YouTube. Instagram. No? That was Instagram. So one just below the Facebook one is Instagram. The middle one is Twitter. The one with the ghost in the yellow, Snapchat. The one below that is Pinterest with the P. In the middle, it's LinkedIn. And beyond LinkedIn, it's Google+. And, and to be fair, when we created this um, training and PowerPoint, it, it's quite old. So yeah. now it's TikTok as well. Yeah. Would be added to that. And House Party. And House, and house party. party. And Clubhouse. Yeah, and, and during lockdown, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, there was lots of serious, for those who work in the criminal justice sector, there's a lot of serious violent incidents that happened that actually started on an app called House Party. Arguments started there that actually spilled, spilled out into the community where major shootings happened. So, here's the thing, right? If, as parents and carers and practitioners, we're not aware of these, web, of these apps and sites that young people are accessing, how can you safeguard them? How do you know what they're looking at if you don't know what they are yourself? So there's a real big opportunity for you to download them and have a look and see. I'm not saying for you to use them, but absolutely know what they are. Sexting. Anybody familiar with the word? Know what it is? Go quick. Okay, I'm going to flick. I'm going to quickly go through what the meaning of mm. it is. But this is a sharing of inappropriate images on phones, and it doesn't have to be that photo, it could be a nude. If you take a photo, if a 14-year-old girl takes a photograph of herself and sends it to a 14-year-old boy, it is still illegal. It's illegal to receive it, it is illegal to send it. What happens next can be very catastrophic for the life of that young person. What's been happening as well, just to quickly um, touch in, within school settings, there's been a lot of incidences where a boy or girl, or both genders, um, are having a conversation, and it's like, ah, uh, you send me that picture of your breasts, or 
your penis or whatever it is, and it's just between me and you, and that person thinks that that picture is just a picture that's going to be between the two people that are communicating. But then what happens is that someone sends body parts, and then it's the big classroom school joke, and their body parts go around the school, and then bullying in, you know, happens. So it's a, it's a massive thing that's happening. Us sharing this information with you is not is is it's kind of I shouldn't say normal. It's commonplace. This stuff happens all the time with loads of young people who are eighth grade students who are going to private schools who are doing really really well who are not coming from a disadvantaged background. None of that. It is happening everywhere and anywhere. And just want to make you aware of that so you don't think that oh it's a certain type. There are no types when it comes to this sort of stuff that we're talking about. My daughter was six uh, when she had an iPad and we'd just bought it and um, never put the guidance on it yet. And um, she was looking at pregnant ladies and I couldn't find her. And when I looked, calling this child and she's nowhere to be seen. And I found her around behind the door. What I saw on her iPad, where she'd gone to. And she just looked up at me, but mommy, I was only looking at pregnant ladies. When I started to do this, this type of training, and anywhere you go, I'm going to keep it so real with you. The news likes to act as though youth violence is like a black problem only, and no other race is involved. If I click back to this picture here, right, you see my pictures as Asian boys, yeah? When you look at the top of the tree in terms of the drug trade, it's mainly white men who are doing big, organized 60 million, 68 million pound drug shipment deals into the city, you know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that around this agenda, people don't talk the truth. Someone is letting in the drugs. Someone is letting in the guns. Someone is licensing young people to go into shops and buy Rambo zombie, zombie knives, you know what I'm saying? So the first thing I want to say is that don't make media Fool your heads up like this is just a black issue. Because realistically, in the scales, in the infrastructure of gang culture and drugs, black youth are just like at the bottom of the pile. They're just the ones that are like the shop floor workers in Asda, who are just packing the shelves, and then there's a management team, and then there's the directors. This is a typical artist that has Instagram, will post regularly jewelry, designer clothes, posing with loads of high cash money, and we'll be getting bookings to go to festivals like that with over a, probably, what, 30,000 people there, 10,000 people there to go on the stage and talk about shanking a man, stabbing a man, or shooting someone. So what happens now is that we're fighting against an industry. So we've got the street stuff we're talking about. We're talking about social media. We're talking about the drug trade. Then now we've got an industry that's glamorizing this lifestyle and will pay the artists probably like 20, 15K to come and perform on the stage and talk negative lyrics. So, oh gosh. I want to put a, like a disclaimer just in case <laughs> never sees this. I actually think out of all the rappers out there, he's one of the most positive ones out there. But the reason why I'm showing this and trying to highlight something to you is that he uses Instagram platform to post himself going to the bank and taking out 200 thousand pounds. Why am I sharing this with you? I want you to understand that you see when you young people are on social media and they're watching this type of content. So when we're in schools and we're trying to teach, to talk to teachers and teachers are saying to us, Nathan, the, 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 the young people are just not interested in our subjects. I said, do you know why? And I try and show them some of this stuff and they're like, oh, like they're not interested in algebra and Bunsen burner because they're looking at different, like, let's keep it real because they're looking at different people on social media that are showing that they can per, like, take out 200,000 pound out of their bank account. So what does that do to them? They say, forget school. Antonio, remember the case that was dealing with a 14 year old, all right, who's constantly absent every week, going missing to do county lines. When Antonio and the team are trying to engage him in his 14, he's saying, yo bro, when I leave Birmingham, and go out of town and call it going OT, I can come back with a thousand pounds. He's covering his face. So to me, if you want to be big and bad and you want to be all up on the screen and that with all, you, all, all the older boys, 
Show your face. One thing I've noticed why they cover the face is for police involvement. It's not about them covering it to going against all their orders and whatnot. They know that police are watching these videos heavily, but you can't prove that I've done this if I've got this belly on. Does that make sense? Through the years of mentoring, and I've been doing it for a lot of years, these are the signs that I've personally seen, and these are the signs that the government says. Now, the problem that I've seen across the board, one of the bigger problems is parents don't know. It's, got, it's not my child syndrome, or I don't think my child's that bad until your child's in the prison. And literally, it, you could see the signs and be like, oh, no, nah, he got money from his friend. Oh, no, nah, no, 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 no. He's just being quiet. He's just, he's just scunning himself. There's nothing wrong with him. He's cool. He's just busy. Why is he coming home late? Oh, he's just at his friend's house. Do you know his friends? Do you know where he is? Can you account for where he is? My son, he's 15 years old. Yeah. From 14 years old, he understood is the best way and shortest way to find the money is go follow these people. And unfortunately, I couldn't stop him. And still I must struggle with him. And I couldn't do nothing. And that lady, Chris, she knows lots of things about my child. And unfortunately, as a mother, and I'm a single mother, I couldn't do nothing. I know, you were, I know you're saying you're a single mom. There are other parents as well in your position that are going through the exact same thing where they're coming to us and they're feeling like they're the only person going through this. Like, they're feeling isolated. I missed that one off as well. They're feeling isolated. They're feeling as though no one's on their side. But, you see, the beauty of Kitchen Table Talks is the fact that we can have a space where we're getting parents together, where they're sharing experiences. It can be, it can be dire experiences. The local authority doesn't sit down and tell mums, this is what we can do. Here is an organisation we can refer you to. Because I, of course, I'm worried about the children, the young adults, but I'm more worried about the parents. The one thing about children, especially young boys, they don't like to see their mother go through struggle. So they would do whatever it takes to make sure that you, as a mother, does not struggle even if it means putting ourselves at risk, if that makes sense. And then the problem is, is that when that lifestyle comes in and that money comes in, you kind of want to buy nice things because you've never had money before. We will obviously continue to support you as an individual um, and, and see, if possible, if we've got mentors that will connect to your son, because not everyone, young boys, are going to connect to. And the thing that we will try and do is show him that there's another way. Because one of the things that we've got is a program called Street Smart to Business Start which is actually trying to show young people that you know the skills that you're using to be on the road and doing illegal things is actually a skill. It's actually like, you're actually quite amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Forget that it's illegal for a moment. And we get them to really look at how they can transfer their skills and put that into a legal business. The amount of youth out there, even just a touch base, shows them that someone still cares. And for them, that goes miles. Communication, one of the biggest barriers to young people, but even adults as well, so I'm not even just going to bring it to young people, is communication. Because a lot of the times, either they don't feel comfortable talking to some of the organisations or their parents or whatnot, or they don't have an opportunity to. So one of the big things that I've, I've first seen about worked is giving them a space to just offload and talk. Literally, they won't speak to a counsellor, because why am I going to tell the counsellor that I do drugs and mean that I read that I sell drugs and I'm doing whatever or whatnot? They're not going to tell them that because they don't trust them. But what they're going to do is say, yo, I want to speak to someone that looks like me. I want to speak to someone that's been through what I've been through. I want to be someone that's on the other side and can show me a way forward. Some of the young people have cried on my shoulder for me just giving them a hug and saying, yo, it's going to be okay. I'm going to be here regardless of whatever it is. I've got nothing but love for you, and I don't expect you to do anything. That love is a big game changer because they believe, you know what, someone is out there for me that loves me for being me. I don't need to change. And that love is the thing that changes them. Yeah. I am a big believer of faith-based intervention because a lot of these youth, they're always picking something to believe in, but it's just what they're believing in. Now... I don't care what religion it is, I have seen so much people change through faith, it's unbelievable. 
but it also giving them that faith to know that at one day, if you going through this process, something's going to change. But I just believe that you going through this process, at the end of it, you are going to be amazing. You already are amazing. But what I want you to know is that while you're going through this process, you're learning. But you need to have the faith to understand that one day, it could be today, it could be 10 years, it could be 15 years, but one day, it's going to change. Amen. We, we, everybody in this room needs to be the change because everybody can play their part. I feel like society has just lost some back to basic things. In, like Antonio talked about it, love, time, building trust. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, oh, it's, it's just, it's their kids. Oh, it's their problem. And all of that, like, I, I truly believe that love can really make a difference. And I just want to encourage people that, like, it's not so big what you've, you need to do. Sometimes it's just sh showing them your heart in a different way. Parenting is not easy. In fact, it is extremely hard. Some days you may feel, you may even feel that you are going completely crazy, but it gets easier with time. Kids grow, change, become just a tiny bit more independent each day. Be loving, patient, forgiving, forgiving, patient, loving, forgiving, forgiving. forgiving. And most importantly, just hang in there. When I talk to some parents as well, and I get them to say affirmations, so that's like declaring things that they want, that they are, things that they want like right now, things that they want to manifest. One of the hardest ones that they can say, like they can't say is, I love me for who I am. I would say, um, as a parent, going through a lot of what you've said, um, I wouldn't say I buried my head in the sand, but when your child keeps saying, that's not me, that's not me, and you know it because you see it, you've been there, and you're saying to them, I know, and they say, no, it's not me. No, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not in gangs, I'm not this, I'm not that. But you know it, yeah. you see it. But until the child actually admits it, you can't go any further. But you have to just keep pushing. So, so sometimes it's not burying your head in the sand, it's actually getting a child to admit you are doing what you're doing. When young people unfortunately die in our community, you see social media go on fire. Oh my God, I can't believe it. RIP this and RIP that. But then when we try and put on the solutions for it, people, it's like... Wait there, I'm just throw on to that point. Because the other side of that is, and this is something that we have to start thinking about and start addressing as practitioners. Because we might see an organization posting more and doing more activity and they'll be like, they're just doing it for the clout. And then the other side of it is, if you see them being more, like doing more work in the community and whatnot, and probably using their way to entice more young people in there, because obviously young people see the work and money and whatnot. They'll be like, they're just doing it for the money, but there's not actually no support where, okay, are we actually going to be the support to each other and work in unity as practitioners to push this agenda forward of change? Drama, mix-up, violence and sex just sell so much. And that's what makes it harder as well, because that's what the system pushes, and it's what, even as adults and the media, it's what they push as well. So it's like... For example, this event, I posted it more than once. I all like wrote, who's reaching? You get me? And no one ain't going to jump in and push it the same way. When Squid Games is out, Squid Games is everywhere. Red, flat, red light, green light, red light, green light. But no one ain't pushing these things the same way as much as it should. And that's what's, that's, what's, that's what's not helping as well. It's not my responsibility to make you see that our young children are killing each other. I'm sure you can see that. But what we need to be responsible for is parenting our children, taking responsibility for where they go, for who they are friends with, for what they choose to do, what they choose not to do, asking the hard questions and address it. Where did you get the trainers from? Where did you get that coat from? How come you've got white stuff under your bed? Not phoning us as an organization when it's hit the fan and there's a visual happening because your child has passed away tragically, but asking the hard questions at the time when it's happening. And that's what this event is about. I'm telling, we're telling you all this stuff, not because it, I, we don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it, it's not pleasant, but it's essential. How many of us are dealing with um, things now because we've been through something traumatic ourselves? For example, we often, we often find that out of the biggest adversities become rise the greatest advocates. 
So you go through something and suddenly I am now an advocate for this thing, whether it's knife crime, whether it's domestic violence, whether it's sexual assault, we'll go through something and we that triggers us into action. And it was making me think, because I thought, do we all have to be triggered by something bad happening to us to get involved? Do we all have to have our son or daughter killed for us to decide I want to be part of a solution? And I'm happy to say most of us aren't in a situation where we've had to deal with that, but a lot of people have to wait until they feel it themselves. And so I wanted to inspire you, motivate you, and hopefully make you think about it to even take it even another step serious. So being here is the first step of being serious about making a change. But the next step is how passionate are you about making sure that less, no, not less, that no more children die unwarranted deaths, that no more kids, uh, kids, you know, my dad would kill me for saying kids. Children. No more children <laughs> are left isolated, are left un, un, unloved, uncared for, left to their own devices. Yeah. For those who can stand, everyone stand, please. Everyone stand, everyone stand, everyone stand. And everyone get their right hand and put it on their chest by their heart. And, and, and repeat after me. Today, Today. We, addressed it. we addressed it. But, but I am, I am the, change the change I want to see, I want to see in, the world. in the world. It may be hard, it may be hard but, I have but I have the strength. The, strength, the, power, the power, the determination, the determination to, make a difference. to make a difference. I am, I am my, brothers my brothers and my sisters, and my sisters keeper. keeper. Turn around and just look at someone. You will be hands still on your chest. And just, and just say to them, you are, you are amazing. amazing. Now turn to someone else and make eye contact. Make eye contact. And say, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are amazing. Amazing. And then turn to someone else and say, excuse me. Excuse me. I just want to say. Just, just want to say. Thank you. Thank you. For attending. For attending. Let's address this. Let's address it. Now give yourselves a big round of applause. Woo!